We have the mumbler on today. <laughs> Sue Rother. <laughs> she's afraid she's going to mumble on her thing. <laughs> are you going to mumble? Just get it out of the way now if you are. I, yeah, it comes and goes. <laughs> the mumbling. <laughs> <laughs> we all mumble at times. <laughs> it's, part, it's part of being human, but, you know, I'm, I'm afraid. I'm taking Prevagen, so. Yeah, there you go. You can do an ad. Maybe I could get Prevagen to uh, do some kind of uh, ads for me on this. Brought to you by Prevagen. They're making... A bazillion dollars. Okay. Yep. And I kept looking at those ads going, oh, come on, you're just grinding up jellyfish and you're, <laughs> you're marketing it out the wazoo, <laughs> right? But I don't know. The pharmacist said there's some research. People buy it like crazy. So you can tell I have Sue Rother on today. Is this going? Oh, yeah. This is all live. <laughs> so okay. Prejigen might not be our <laughs> advertiser after all, I'm they afraid. Don't, they don't need it. They don't need it. Well, they might need it. I don't know. They're all over TV. Yeah, I don't know if that... I think it might actually be, you know, worthy of using it. There's supposed to be some so, yeah. color Yeah, yeah well, you know, the special. There, are je- there is a jellyfish that they say doesn't ever die. Really? Seriously. Yeah, like it's some giant jellyfish that never dies, period. It just lives. He's been around since before yeah, I mean, the it, dinosaurs. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it just, you know, it has, I think, asexual production, reproduction, uh-huh. and it's... A oh. type of jellyfish, not a single jellyfish, but yeah, right. just lives forever. So, no, I don't. Yeah, so our, maybe there is something to that. Our vet, before I left, I said to him, Yeah, well, you can always take Prevagen. I mean, he's my age, about, and he's going, What? And then he goes, Yeah, you have a real issue when you every morning he's, you're drinking your coffee and it's always a new person. <laughs> <laughs> huh. Anyway, he goes, what is that? <laughs> I just, just like everyone, lots of older people are hooked. Well, you know, we all are looking for it, right? We get to a certain age and we're like, we want to keep our memories. We want to be as young as possible. And you can't remember you know? Hollywood actors that, or, you know, whatever. Yeah, just... I, I couldn't remember those anyway. So no, I'm I, only, I can remember dates and certain things. I'm good with dates, but yeah. I mean, that's the normal aging process. I'm sure so, it is. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I actually hate hearing, you know, when people say, oh, it's a, a senior moment, right? It's like, no, it's a neurogenic lapse that occurs with old age. Say that yeah, instead of senior moment because it's really not a senior moment. It's just a, the normal process. So, But you can still paint well, right? Well, that's the other thing. You have to keep painting, right? Yeah. You can't just work for two months and then get this giant one because there is... A thing that happens neurologically. Sure, that neuroplasticity. If you're painting, yeah, yeah, that's it, probably. Yeah, you, yeah, it is. <laughs> Sounds good. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So it keeps yeah. you engaged. It keeps the neurons flowing, the synapses, yeah, and, all and that also stuff. the repetition of. Yeah, yeah, painting. yeah. Well, for dementia, they say things that are challenging and things like that are very good for staving off dementia. I and, it's yeah. N- well, there's some things but like that. No, but no, you're right. I no, think so too. And they can yes. have people that have lots of plaques in the brain and still are active they still do very well because they're if keeping you those have a neuro, a lot of neural pathways then yeah, that's you got right. more that's right to... yeah <laughs> so let's get back let's go to that word because you've been painting for a while you've been in arts for a while you where did you grow up did you grow, grow up in california yes yeah. i did yeah whereabouts yeah. in oakland i always say still say that yeah i probably shouldn't say this <laughs> it's oakland right i'm not an idahoan oh no yeah <laughs> No, I yeah, I was born in Oakland, but I grew up in um, Belmont, the peninsula, basically. What's the peninsula? I don't know. The peninsula, San Francisco's on the end of the peninsula, and then okay. going south. Okay. There's like San Mateo, Belmont, right. Redwood City. So in that area. Yes. That'd be Woodside. a gorgeous, a gorgeous place to grow up. Actually. It was an amazing place to grow up because it wasn't all trampled and developed so yeah. heavily developed. Yeah. Well, so many people have moved there. Yeah, right. it's horrible. Oh, God, I was just there. Yeah, it's really changed. Ugh, Tesla's all over the place with 30-year-olds driving them. And the traffic, you know, was always kind of, ch- not always, not like L.A. I mean, yeah. you, but the East Bay now, you can't even. Yeah, well, imagine what it would have been like for Maynard Dixon when he was there. Oh, yeah, you know, no, I mean, I, as I've gotten older and I look back to how it was when I was a kid, California was paradise. Yeah. You know, you could just roar up to Yosemite. There wouldn't be hardly anybody there. Yeah. yeah. That's how it goes, I guess, with everything. Tucson will be that way, I'm afraid. But when I'm old. Tucson is still. It still has a. I was thinking that. Yeah. It's, so, it's very livable. You can still drive around. Yeah, and it not... is. But don't tell anybody that. 
<laughs> go to Phoenix. Go to Phoenix. You can come down and visit the gallery. But stay in Scottsdale, Phoenix. That's where you guys really want to be. Phoenix Tucson, just so it's too totally small. <laughs> so push them to Phoenix. They like that. Wells, Nevada, there's a place. Yeah. That's not overrun. <laughs> there's a few. <laughs> so what did your folks Which, do? What, okay, did they, so what did they what did they do? My dad was in electronics. Uh-huh. Um he, he did a lot of piano tuning. He set up very sophisticated stereo systems for wealthy people. Mm-hmm. Um, he worked for Sherman and Clay, which is mm-hmm. a very old San Francisco uh, company that sold pianos, but they did a range of stuff. Mm-hmm. Was he a musician at all? No, not really, but he was really into music. I mean, he had really nice turntables when I was growing up and mm-hmm. lots of classical. He wasn't really into And, and what, what about your mom? My mom, um, she grew up in San Francisco. She, I don't early on, she had, let's see, her mother was, what do you call it, like a mail-order bride, essentially, uh-huh. from... Serbia or Yugoslavia, somewhere in that area. Uh-huh. And her father was supposedly Austrian, but I don't know really too much about him. And he was a chef at Tadich's Grill. Uh-huh. <laughs> and um, anyway, it, it, she she had a lot of mental issues later on. And your mother or your no, grandmother? grandmother. Yeah. Grandmother did. I mean, she loved to swim at Ocean Beach, and she just had issues. Yeah, well, if you're a male bride right there, it's going to be, right? That's going to be a major issue. Yeah, exactly. I mean, she was escaping something to try to find something better. That's kind of a last-ditch effort. So then her parents got divorced, and so then they farmed her out to take care of rich kids, my mother. Uh And, yeah, anyway, I mean, she finished high school, but that was it, but that was, you know, the era. And then she worked as a secretary for Sherman and Clay. That's how she met my father. I see. And then off and on she would work for him and then she worked for some biological firm later on because she didn't like being at home Mm -hmm. all the time that did taste you know flavors Mm -hmm. for yeah yeah i mean she liked seasoning and she loved to cook and then was she or your father interested in art at all Mm, i mean i remember (laughs) Because I always had little art projects going all the time when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. And I remember my dad sitting at the kitchen table go- telling my uncle or somebody, you know, she's really good at this stuff, but I don't know what she's going to do with it. Yeah, and I, mean, I that's still a, remember, yeah. A lot of people probably yeah. thought that in those days, especially. Oh, yeah, definitely. And did you, but did you have an uh, ability, you think, you, right off the bat? Yes. And did yes. you have some teachers that were important in that, igniting you to become... High school really? a little bit, but my math teacher went, really wanted me to do math. Yeah, which probably would have been. Uh, yeah, because you were good at math. Yeah. 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 Um, and um, wait, tell me what you just asked me again. Well, the, the, I guess really the question is, did you? Win? Oh, teachers. Yeah. yeah exactly. I, okay. When I got to, I went to UC Davis. But before you went that in middle school or. High school, were there anyone, or did you win any major awards or kind of recognition for your art? No, I just, I always liked to draw, Yeah. except then I got into horses, so that took up a fair amount of time. Yeah, jumping, riding kind of thing? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I started taking riding lessons when I was eight. Yes. So, and then I kind of kept going with it, Um, and then my parents got me a horse when I was about 13. Hmm. So that yeah, then I was doing hunters, jumpers, dressage mm-hmm. because in those days in in that area, the dressage thing was all in the east. Nobody yeah. hardly knew what it was, and yeah, my horse just moved really well, so she would do well. And you kept that horse through like college kind of thing. Into college, first year of college, she was hanging out in this muddy <laughs> place to board horses, and I I ended up. Because I could see, you know, I can't keep doing this and through college. So I sold her to, last name Baldwin, huge name in Hawaii. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, sure. and yeah. She, they, she shipped her over there and oh, yeah. turned Very cool. her in kind of a major kind of dressage horse. Oh, nice. Lots of money. I'm sure she took good care of her. Yeah, it's Hawaii, too. Unbelievable. Yeah. As yeah, far they as have, just pastures and stuff. Yeah, they have enormous amount of property there. Oh, yeah, the Baldwin's very yeah, well known. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, big, big time. Yeah. Old, old school, for yeah, sure. Yeah, and I rode horses in Woodside 
So, you know, there there was always a range of money, nothing like what there is now. But mm-hmm. yeah, so it was sort of an interesting assortment of people that you would meet. Because, uh, you know, Belmont was much more middle class, essentially. Mm-hmm. And so when you are, so you're interested in art, you're interested in horses, clearly you spent a lot of time Yeah, I used to draw horses and paint yeah. and watercolor. Well, you still do. <laughs> yeah, and my, <laughs> right, yes. Um, yeah, and my high school teachers encouraged me, but it was really when I got to UC Davis and Wayne Tebow was there. Yeah, so so when you went to school, you went as an art, in the, in the art department, so you liked it enough, you go, okay, I, I might want to do this as a profession. Yeah, I mean, while I was there, cause, because Davis sort of looked down upon commercial art, as they classified mm-hmm. it, and but I knew, because I was always interested in packaging my whole life, and mm-hmm. type, and mm-hmm. you know, signage, and mm-hmm. um, and I just kept thinking, I can't make a living at fine art, and I, so then, when I was in the art library at Davis, I discovered uh, an art center catalog, <laughs> I was like, yeah, the, and illustration annuals from the mm-hmm. New York Society of Illustrators, which I'd never seen either. Um, and so I thought, nah, I really need to be going to Art Center. <laughs> but my mother was like, no, 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 you, you know, you got to get your bachelor's in. Right, in fine art. It's, yeah, or, yeah. You well, just, was that what you got it in, was in fine art? Yes, Yeah, it was. And so Tebow, Wayne Tebow, who just yeah. passed last I two know. weeks ago. I know, he was 101. One. 101. One. And then was Gregory Condos there teaching as well? Yeah, wait, he's a ceramics. No. No, Gre- oh, the painter. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He would have been there, I think. But was maybe, he at Davis? Because yeah. I, I don't think I ever had a classroom. Yeah, he was. And Don Haggerty was also, I think, at, at there, but I don't know if he would have been there when you were there. there was, he, was an, he wasn't a t- teacher, but he was an art uh, historian. It was kind of a cool period of time because it was like late 60s and early 70s mm-hmm. for art in California. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you were there, what, 68 to 72-ish yes, kind of thing? exactly. Yeah. yeah, so you were there right in the Yeah, that was when it was right. I mean, I mean, well, you just think, I mean, that's and, the, the Vietnam War at its peak, yeah, really, was that, that whole time. Too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. My mother was terrified I'd go to some demonstration. Uh-huh, did but you? They didn't want me to go to Berkeley yeah. for that reason. Yeah, did you go to some of the demonstrations? I almost did, but she kept going, no, you're going to get shot, or, and, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's a worry. I mean, yeah. I can see it, especially after what happened at Kent State, you know. Yeah. And um, yeah. No, I know. And my parents were very conservative. Yeah. I mean, I've totally swung the other way. But and did you do Summer of Love and that kind of stuff in San Francisco, or you were really no, at I Davis and Davis? You know, because there's a whole sort of crowd at right, Davis, exactly. which is a lot of them are kind of Central Valley people. And and yeah, I remember driving into the city with some of my friends that were driving down Hate. Yes. And looking, just looking at what's going on, yeah. and I mean. I grew up on the, you know, going to San Francisco because my dad worked in the city. Yeah. So I spent a time with my mother making me carry white gloves into the city. And right. from that, you know, to. Right. Yeah. Hippies and love yes. and the yeah. whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. what did you think about that when you saw that? What was your thought? I mean, can you remember? I just remember, oh God, this is weird. And all the drugs you yeah. know, sort of turned me off because people really seemed. Yeah. If you're walking down the street, really loopy and yeah. yeah, well they probably were a lot of them. Yeah, and it's very foreign because you know I grew up in the '50s or everything was. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was a different time. Yes. But were you embracing the music and that kind of stuff that was going? Yeah, on? some yeah. of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. The, the Beatles. The Beatles, totally. The, the Beatles. Who and all yeah. those guys. Yeah. Um. So, you're at Davis, and so is how many classes or how much time did you actually get to spend with Wayne Tebow? I had multiple classes from him, but you had to sleep in the hallway to get a painting class with him. Oh, really? <laughs> yes, even back then. So, and yeah, it's that's a, interesting because sixty that's 68 to 72, and he really kind of came out in about 61, right? I think that's when... I don't know when he actually he, hit it. He, he was doing some stuff. I think that's when Stone Gallery, yeah, it was right around Maybe. I mean, 61. that was... Yeah, and you could get a painting for 600 bucks. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. I know. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, he hit sort of... He was doing kind of street things that were kind of boring, really, you know, and then he kind of hit it with his... I don't know when he started the cakes and pies. Sixty one. Yeah. Yeah. And right the in ice cream cones. And yeah, right in that. Yeah. Early 60s. So, so you didn't want to wait in line 
I didn't to get want to sleep in to, the hallway, which yeah. I should have, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> and so was he a good teacher? What was he, he like? He was such a good teacher. I, would, I mean, I've met him a couple different times. He was always, what I really liked about him yeah. was very humble. Yeah, he seemed that way. He wasn't afraid to say, "Oh, I've been influenced." I mean, he was he was designing tire ads. He was an art director. Yeah, you know, right. way early on, right? Yes. And he would just go, "Yeah, well, that was an influence in Crazy Cat," which right, Swinnertons. Yes. Yeah. And comics and just all kinds of stuff. Right. You know, and he wasn't afraid to say that, which yeah. is just so stupid because many people probably still, you yeah. know, fine art is this and right. illustration and commercial art is this and they don't. I even see it today with contemporary artists that don't want to say, you know, Maynard Dixon's an influence because they don't want to. Maynard Dixon was an illustrator and a lot yeah, of good yeah. painters, yeah. they were illustrators yeah, yeah. because they got trained yeah. how to do picture making right. and, you know, how to shoot reference. and They just don't. The, the, the thing I see is that Contemporary artists. And who's your audience? They don't want to say, oh, he looks like that person or whatever. So they try to say, oh, no, I'm, you know, I have my own unique influences. And the reality is. Yeah, it's baloney. It's baloney, right? I mean, yeah, sure. They're ripping them. Yeah. Because they don't have enough of them. They don't know what to do. Well, yeah. Or, and you I, talk to somebody like Ed Mel and you go, oh, yeah, Dixon and, you know, you know this yeah. person, uh, McGargy and well, different and police didn't people. Ed do illustration in New he York. He did. Yeah. Yeah. I he did so. a couple of National Lampoon covers. And, and uh, it yeah. just adds to the diversity oh, of yeah. your background oh, and no. your exposure. You know, yeah. it's a good thing. Oh, it's a. I actually give it like a three plus check. You yeah, know? I mean Edward Hopper did illustration. They all did. Yeah, all the good ones and all the good ones. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> so, and even in my contemporary gallery, even you know now, if I have somebody who's an illustrator, like your husband was an illustrator, you're an illustrator, mm -hmm. Dana Szymanski is an mm -hmm. illustrator, you know. Da, 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 da. I have a lot of them that were illustrated. John Moyers, Ed Mel, you know, just keep going down the road. Right. And um, the one thing I like about them that they all have in common, except Francis, but all of the other ones is, you know, they're really good about getting everything on time. <laughs> <laughs> but no, they are good about no. deadlines. Oh, no. Are you kidding? But Illustrators push it right up. No, most but they're of them. good about. <laughs> yeah, well, they understand they, deadlines. They understand deadlines. Let's yes. just put it at that. They yes. do understand deadlines. And Francis is very good at. He has a deadline, but then you know. Yeah. He well, maybe that, it and gets well, that may be three more days. That, that or... may be why, because he was an illustrator for so long that he feels that yeah, okay, I got three days. I'm okay. He, he can pace himself. In other words, yeah, he has the ability, just as you have the ability to pace yourself and know what you can do in what time frame. Pretty some, much. Yeah, yeah. some yeah. paint and, you know, artists that aren't illustrators, they, they learn that, they get there, but I think it takes them longer because they haven't had to have the really the hard deadlines that come in. Right. With illustration, you have really hard deadlines, and if you don't get it, you lost a job, and you probably irritated somebody that's Oh, yeah, like, you can I'm really not, screw you yourself know, as I'm an not, illustrator not if you use the you wrong know. client. And you, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So Wayne was, Tebow was... Uh, giving a good teacher, and did you you think? Okay, that, what was cool about yeah. him? Okay, there were a bunch of just wacko yeah. instructors, right? Uh, yeah. uh, William Wiley was there. What's the guy? The name of the guy that did the dogs and the dots. Um, I, yeah, I can't think of his name, but yeah, there was a range of kind of, and then right. the the TAs. Some of them were really they were even way wackier. Yeah. Like one came over to me and said. Yeah, well, I, I'm, uh, God, some kind of clouds, some kind of drug clouds or something. And I'm like. <laughs> and again, you have to put it, I guess, in the time frame. In too, the that, time frame, yeah, yes. Yeah, 68, 72. I mean, things were just changing. Yeah, the ceramicist, so. what's his name, that was doing. Coons? No, oh, there's another guy there. He was became really famous, toilets and weird stuff. I can't think of his name either. Um, senior moment. <laughs> no, <laughs> there's not such a thing. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, anyway, Tebow, he was a Mormon. He grew up as a Mormon. Yes. So, right. I, I mean, I, I'm not saying whether that made him conservative, but he was much more so than yeah. a lot of... Well, and he liked realism. He was always walking down the hall in his tennis shorts going tennis. He was, a, he was a great tennis player, right? <laughs> yes, no, he loved to play tennis. Yeah, I, and it, he, he was an individual who didn't think of himself as a pop artist. In fact, he would say just the opposite about his things. And he was always in class. He yeah. didn't have his TA in there. Oh, that's interesting. So he yeah. must have loved teaching. He was always in he class, and he was time, always right? working yeah. along with all the students. 
So what did you, what do you think you took away from him? I, well, I loved his attitude about, you know, just the range of influences mm -hmm. um, and his discipline to a certain extent. I mean, you know, his studio was like right across the hall. So mm -hmm. you could walk by the door and see him in there. Right. Um, and Painting all, as well, you mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And he was working on some of those yeah. cake things and yeah. ultimately became hugely famous. Right. Um, I mean, he talked about other influences too. Also, you know, fine artists. Sure. Um, so yeah, I guess it was that, I guess it was the idea that you could kind of blend that line between commercial and fine art. Mm -hmm. And, um, um, I can't remember whether he talked, talked about art center. I can't remember where he actually went to school. Yeah. I don't Whether remember. he was part of all those guys that came out of world war two. And he, well, he definitely was, you know, and then sure. a lot of them went to art center right because they had military right funding um well you ended up there i did as well right yes and when did you end up there by the way just like right out of when i graduated from uc davis i worked for a while and then i started there the so problem could, was that yeah. place was it's always been super expensive yeah. and it was the same as going to stanford then right and my mother and my dad died when i was 15 so mm. She both of them at the same time? No, my my dad did. Yeah. No, and then my mom was widowed, and then she had to work a lot yeah. to try to hang on to the house. And, right. Um. So. Yeah. So trying to go to an expensive school like Art yeah, Center. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Right. I mean, I was able to do a semester. My uncle said he would fund it, but that didn't happen. <laughs> yeah. And my mother, once she realized, oh. You go to this school and you can make a lot of money doing, right? You know, I mean, they had car design, they had all kinds, yeah. of, kinds of stuff, and so this would, yeah, I, Ed went to that school, Ed Mill. Did he? Yeah. So, yeah. but he would have been probably before you. Mm -hmm. And at um, Davis, Fritz Shoulder went there as well. He worked with. Oh, he did. Yeah, I didn't know if you ever ran across. Were there any artists that you you, you know now that were in your class that are recognizable? Yeah, Not Shoulder worked with Tebow. Did mm -hmm. he? Did yeah. he? So, and what was his history? I mean, so he's close to my age, maybe he would have been he's older, yeah, he would have been a probably maybe a little older than you, even I don't remember you know he's been dead for fifty no twelve years, maybe or something oh twelve years yeah, no, so, yeah no, his stuff yeah. was cool. Uh, Oh, yeah. I no. like it. <laughs> yeah, no, it's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. You know, and there's a book that was out on shoulder, and he talked about Tebow, the you know, influence, and Gregory Condos was uh, involved in that as well, and his influence, and they both, I think, wrote chapters on the book, which was the... About him. Yeah, this was the shoulder show. He was just a cool dude. <laughs> yeah, he was very influential. He's an important artist, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. But there must have been quite a few of those individuals that went through Davis. That I think so, yeah. actually. Yeah, I just was kind of clueless at that time. Yeah, well, you're young, so you go to <laughs> art. So you go to art center. Yeah, and but you can only go for a, a only, semester. Yeah, of I, the, I think I got credit for a semester from what I did. You know, my charcoal right. nudes from uh, from Davis. Yeah, and so yeah, then I was trying to go. So I went another semester. So I. I I went two semesters essentially, right. and then I just I could have gotten a scholarship because my grades, you know. But I just I don't know. I kind of freaked out about how much money because I was going right. to have to borrow a certain amount of money besides the scholarship. Sure. And yeah, so, so did. I didn't keep going, but I really regret it because there were some there were a lot of older uh, instructors that had worked for Disney right. during the cool time at Disney, right? right? And there were just some really interesting instructor yeah yeah but, which yeah yeah it might have led to something else potentially yeah exactly yeah and but, there was a lot going on in la at the time yeah too. yeah yeah for sure and you're mm -hmm. still young you're not married or anything at this mm -hmm. time right no yeah no. not yet <laughs> 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 so when you leave art center then what do you do um i leave art center because i didn't go far enough with it right so I rode horses, right? So my I kept my horse at Stanford Stables mm -hmm. for a long time, and I knew the manager guy. And so I started teaching riding yeah. because, mm -hmm. I, you know, it was just something to do, and I, and I could make decent money doing right. it. Right, and you were good. 
Yeah. You probably enjoyed it too, right? Oh, I did. Yeah. No, it, because the, the writing program at Stanford was in the PE department. So I, I got all these, you know, students that were some really interesting and actually pretty engaged in trying to learn how to ride. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, yeah. Um, and so I did that for a while and then I thought, oh God, I can't listen to another person talk about horses. And so, I mean, even though, you know, I loved it when I was doing it, right? but it's so consuming, right? And were you painting or doing anything while you were doing that? Or do you remember? Not really. Yeah. You were, much. you were focused back on horses. What was your mom saying at this time? She was like, okay, you got the degree in fine art. Now you're back to horses. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I can't even remember how much she was influencing me at that point. Yeah. Um, but so then I I started kind of thinking about going to school at uh, the Academy of Art in San Francisco. Right. And it seemed more sort of user-friendly <laughs> than Art Center is very slick. Right. right. And I mean, even though when I went there, I was in the old building where the hardwood floors creaked and it was... Mm -hmm. This weird old girl and, school. And why did and, you feel you needed more training? What was it that you got? Because I knew if I was going to do illustration, I knew at that point I had to have a portfolio, and I didn't yeah. have much at that point. Yeah. So, yeah, so I ended up going to, because people told me, oh, Barbara Bradley, who was head of the illustration part, department at the academy at the time, mm -hmm. was really good with illustration, you know, and I kind of... I looked at the place, wandered around. I just decided to go for it. And was that was she a reason too? One of the reasons? Yeah, I mean she she had worked in New York um, at some of the the studios that mm -hmm. existed then, where where you know they would bring in illustration work mm -hmm. into the studio, and then whoever would do the job. Um, and so she had a lot of commercial experience. And being an illustrator herself. I would think maybe just because she's a woman. and She was probably the only woman in yeah, that right. studio. Or right. maybe, I don't know. Yeah, but that had to yeah. be, I would think, somewhat of an influence. That, you know, this is a lady, this is a person who's made it, who's the yeah. same gender as me, and I'm right. going into a right. field that's rather man-oriented, yes. dominated, I would assume, right? Yeah, I mean, there were women illustrators at that time. Yeah. Whereas pre prior, earlier on, they were just yeah, forget it. dismissed or, oh, you do children's books. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, yes, she was an influence. And there were a lot of really good students there then, too, that you just learn a lot from, mm -hmm. you know, the other students and their, you know, how they draw and right. their and attitudes. So how long did you do that? How long were you at the school? I mean, did you get a degree? I was trying. No, I should have got my master's. I was yeah. stupid, but I was just fixated on get the portfolio right. and get out there. And, you know, because I'm starting to get older and I'm thinking, oh, God, I'm really, you know. Right. So, <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, probably three years. I mean, I was working part time for an electrical engineer that wanted to put me through electrical engineering school. Right, because you're good and at I, math, right? Yeah, well, also, you know, I'm just. I'm drawing fluorescent lights right. in hallways for Embarcadero Center. Right. I mean, he had major clients. That right. Guy. Yeah. And I thought, Ugh, do I really? Do I want? Yeah. There's no creativity. Light switches in. <laughs> no, I yeah. know there's not much. No, I wouldn't think. I don't know having not. Well, done I mean, it, and right. at that time, everybody was drafting. Right. Right. You know, there wasn't any digital. Right. You were having CAD stuff. Yeah. Which fit for what you could do from a, just a gross mechanical sense. You mm -hmm. know, you have good fine motor skills, so you could do those kind of things. I'm yeah, sure. and it was it was kind of, in kind of a cool part of San Francisco. I had <laughs> Which an old is probably brick building. more important. So you finish <laughs> so, you, so school, then and then I what got happened? myself through school, and um, yeah, and then I just started taking my portfolio out and some of those in the instructors that I knew at the academy mm -hmm. and other students right. were going, ah, go to Harcourt Brace, which yeah. is a textbook company, right? And they were based in San Francisco at the time. So I just started working for them and then it just kind of took off from there. Because yeah, you did a lot of illustrations, right? I mean, you did work. I did. Francis and I, uh, our, our, our agent in New York, yeah. who partially represent me and they've represented him for years. Right. So they, there's some program in started in Europe where because illustrator illustration jobs often it's a buyout which means, you know, then they buy the rights mm. to that artwork. Mm -hmm. So once there's a buyout, they can it can be used again and again and again. Right. And illustrator doesn't see 
Anything. Anything. Right. So this program somehow, I don't even know how it works because like our our agents doesn't, we, yeah, sign here, fill out this paperwork. Right. And maybe you'll get a check once a year. Right. So we, I just, you had to guesstimate how many illustrations you'd done in your career. So, I mean, I was like 5,000 because I did all this work for this high-end grocery store chain in New Jersey, which I probably did 3,000 illustrations. Wow. For. That's a ton. No, it was, they'd ship me. <laughs> They'd ship me because what I was doing basically is, you know, the ugly mailers that mm -hmm. grocery stores pass out for their, right. for their, or used to, whatever. Yeah. Their promotion, their sale stuff. Uh -huh. Instead of those kind of icky images of apples and carrots and stuff, right. I was they, this, this uh, advertising company in New York talked them into, oh, here you could do, have Sue Rother do these looser, more right. artsy looking versions right. of those products, right? So yeah, I probably did three thousand or more. I bought my agent a house because they kept getting a percentage. Right. And they would ship me a box of products, could be steaks yeah. that were this thick <laughs> that weren't refrigerated, right? Yeah, so Just no pile good. it in the box. Yeah. Oh, and then gross. I would shoot reference shots. And then you would make And then I would make yeah, sometimes I did twelve to twenty four a week. And so where what happened to all those paintings that you made? They bought them. And who knows where those went? Yeah, who knows? Have you ever seen any of your old illustrations come out on the market? I mean, I did some posters for them. No. I mean, I you know, I've done posters for wineries in Napa and just right. yeah, no, honestly, I haven't. But that doesn't mean Yeah, I mean, would you were you signing them Sue Rother? A lot of illustration they don't want you to sign. Right. And maybe they'll give you a credit, but it depends on what kind of job it is. Like for a book cover, mm -hmm. you get credit. Right. But for a lot of magazine illustrations, maybe, but generally not. Or they might give you credit, you know, in the beginning, in the where the table of contents is. Or mm -hmm. um, and did you do some of those books and things? Magazines? I did. I did some book covers. I did a lot of, a lot of real estate imagery. Like they'd have some technical drawing of a mm -hmm. potential house. And right. They'd go, "This is icky. Can you make it look more artsy?" Right. So I did quite a bit of that for a while i did just a rain i did diaper catching <laughs> imagery and little babies with, right and i gerber had me try to redesign the baby face they've been yeah, doing yeah. for a thousand years right and they look you know they liked it but i think they just thought that their brand identified so strongly yeah. with that yeah and so would you get anything like for this grocery store, would you get some royalties yourself uh, when they use them over and over again? Or is it, was it just you got... No, it was i I'm pretty... I can't remember. I think it was a single usage yeah. that I got. And then my agent kept taking a cut. Even all they did was answer the phone right. in the beginning, right? You know, and then years are going by and I'm really working hard and my kids are little and they have these deadlines constantly. Right. And... So, so anything you no, produced, he he would they, get. They the the grocery store chain owned it. Yeah. He, yeah, yeah. And when did you meet Francis, your husband, Francis Livingston? I met him at Academy of Art in San Francisco. Okay. And I kept <laughs> I kept looking at his drawings on the wall, and I thought, God, who is this woman? I can't, it, like amazing drawings. Like, yeah. You know, he's always <laughs> been really good at. Right. Yeah. And then one time, I was I don't know he. He walked up to get some award or something, and I was like, oh, that's Francis Livingston. Not a girl. Huh? Uh, no. Huh. No. And, yeah, it just kind of went from there. His old girlfriend was a friend of mine at the school, and uh -huh. she introduced me to him. And, yeah. So you go, I want to go out with him. It wasn't him coming no, after I you just, as much. I remember or? when he was walking across the – this was Bradley Hall's big room with right. this cool – ornate dome and stuff right uh and he i thought god he has amazing eyes and that was <laughs> <laughs> and good hair yeah and good hair great hair and so you get you guys uh become an item when did you guys get married how how long did you guys date and when, when did you guys get married do you remember you're not really married I mean, we've just been together forever, okay. and we should probably, you know, because it would be better financially. But Yeah, so you've been together for how long now? 40 years. 40 plus years, something Since like that. Since about 1980. Yeah. That's, yeah. yeah that's, about as long as we've been yeah, that's 40 doing years. art. 
So, so you guys become an item, and mm-hmm. then you guys go from where do you go from when you finish school? The two of you, where do you end up going? Where do you go? To we live? ended up working in the same studio because then, I mean, there were a bunch of artists. There was an instructor guy from the academy, right? And that we all had like a floor in, in a Victorian in San Francisco. Yes. And, so you were living in San Francisco. Yeah, we were living in San Francisco. Yeah. And did you buy a house? Yeah, we did. Good. That we should smart. have hung on to that. Yeah, well, <laughs> you, I mean, you've lived in a lot of nice places, so you know, yeah. you have to have money to buy each one of those places. So if you could... Yeah, that, that place. Yeah. <laughs> we could have easily bought that place. Yeah. But then we moved to Marin. Yeah, which is equally beautiful. Yeah, and we had two kids by that time. Or yeah. no, one and another one on the way. And so, yeah, that was a really good environment for them. And Francis is doing illustration too, right? That's And you're mm-hmm. you're doing illustration yes. as well. So you're yes. both doing illustration. So our businesses were very, you know, separate then. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And how long did you continue to do illustration? Well, I guess you still do it, right? Some, but well, I mean. Well, my you, style, yeah. my kind of loosey-goosey watercolor just kind of fell out of favor after about 20 years of doing it. So mm-hmm. around 2000, it just wasn't as saleable as it has, as you know, it had been. And digital stuff was starting to come out. Right. Of this, and that's what killed my grocery store job. Mm-hmm. I mean, not, it really hated the deadlines, but the money was constant. And good. Yes. It was, yes. It was like a job. Yeah. A real job. Yeah. Yeah, it was. And then digital they came found, in and, yeah. water, and they go, oh, we can do this. Well, they found some kid that right. they could pay hardly anything that could just kind of create sort of a watercolor thing by shooting a product and then, you know, just right. uh, uh, doing it digitally. And that was kind of the end of mm-hmm. that. <laughs> <laughs> what about your agent? What did he, what did he do? I mean, he's, he's out. By then, too. they'd already bought a house off of what they made off of me. And yeah, so I don't know. I mean, ultimately, they retired. Yeah. I mean, the agents we have now are are different. And the, an agent like that, how many people, how many artists would they represent? Oh, numerous. I'm mean, some like of the really dozens? yes, some of the big time ones. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, twenty or more. Yeah, probably more. And what's a typical fee? And that some they of them would, represented would photographers uh-huh. as well as illustrators. What what percent of um, take do they get for each of those jobs typically? Because I have no idea. 20, 25 percent. I think uh-huh. it was 25 percent. Yeah. Well, yeah. And their job is to bring you work, right? I mean, yeah, that's... well, in the old days, they would take, you know, pre computers, they would take portfolios around, make appointments. Right. And say, here, these are the people I have. This is what they can yeah. do, blah, yeah. blah, blah. And they would right. mail out mailers, and art directors would call them and say, okay, we need, you know, somebody that can do X kind of look mm-hmm. or whatever. Did you find it was uh, sexist as far as some of them wouldn't go, oh, she's a girl? Or did they not really know? I I mean, they probably said that about Francis, too, right? They all probably Yeah, oh, no, uh, frequently people would think, yeah. He was a girl. I did when I first saw his stuff in the uh, Smithsonian. That's where I first saw Francis. uh, I was like, oh. These are great. I wonder who she is. I need to contact this person. Yes, I remember your letter. <laughs> yeah. Do you? I don't even remember. No, I remember. Oh, good. <laughs> um, it worked. It did. I mean, it were beautiful. I looked at him and go, this, I didn't, this person. I didn't run into that much of that, really, yeah. honestly. Yeah. Yeah, well, for me, a lot like of women can, would say to me, yeah. other illustrators would go, oh, yeah, yeah, well, they're so sexist. Or, you know, no, you not didn't, really. You didn't have that problem. That's no, good. I mean, if you did the job and you did it on time and you, you know, they didn't care. Yeah. They just, yeah. Because I know in the least the Western field, sometimes it can be that way. That Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. I mean, the Western field's pretty conservative. Yeah. And it, well, I think all that's changing. Again, for me, it never mattered. Like, so... When I was trying to get Francis on board, I didn't care if it was male or female. I just cared right. about what they could do. Right. It's like, oh, my God, this person knows how to throw a paint around for sure. No, and Francis, he was playing around with kind of gallery art, fine art, while he was doing illustration. Mm-hmm. I mean, he, in the mid-'90s, was already playing around with beach boardwalk stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But he didn't really start getting a gallery until later on, right? Pretty soon after that, he got this guy in San Francisco. Yes. Yeah. 
uh, Ray Reynolds who. You're right. I remember that. Yeah. And right. he was doing, but he was doing something completely different at that point. Oh yeah. yeah I mean, his all... work has way evolved. From, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. he went from being known for boardwalk and New York scenes and those yeah, kind of things, which I'm scenes. sure he still does have some of those are known for, and I have one in my own collection. He has, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then when he started working with me in uh, Santa Fe, we were just doing the Native American and the Southwest, and yeah, which we handled pretty much exclusively I mean, for a long time. He was an illustrator, same with me, right? So you're dealing with a range of subject matter, right. even though you can get typecast. You know, like I'm sure if they need a painting of an orange and you don't have it in your portfolio, then oh no, right. well, yeah, right. maybe you have an apple, but you don't. Right. I mean, there is that kind of stuff, but um, yeah. So he had dealt with he dealt with a lot of tons of illustration work on a lot of high profile clients and just a huge range of right imagery, right? Yeah. yeah. So and, it and is. that makes you more adaptable, also as a Fine artist. artist. Yeah, because yeah. he can do modern stuff too. He's done modern yes. imagery as well. I mean, yeah. I've always said Francis can pretty much paint anything. Well, because a lot of that, it's just shape based. You know, it's yeah. picture making, it's shape relationships and light and dark patterns and, and colors. And colors. Yeah. yeah. And so when did you start moving into fine art yourself? <sighs> when did I start? Because um. we've represented your work for quite a while now. No, and I think it was with you guys. Probably so. Yeah. 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 I mean, I saw yeah. your work, and I was like, oh, my God. You know, she paints it just as well as Frances, and it has a different yeah. sensibility. Fem but it, it does have a different sensibility. It's, there is a femininity mine is that a comes little... out, I think. Oh. I do. Yeah? I do. So? I do. Yeah. No, I, I, that always showed in my illustration. Work. Yeah. Um, yeah. I. Yeah, I, pretty much in your gallery. Yeah. Yeah. And, I, you know, I had the background in horses. Right. And I really like the out of doors. I like the sort of history of kind of the Western scene mm -hmm. where, of when cowboys wore a lot more interesting hats. And, yeah. You know, and you've always lived in the West, right? I mean, you live, yeah. you live in Idaho now. Yes. Uh, you lived in Carmel as well? Where did you guys no. You lived in Marin, San Francisco. We lived in Marin, San Francisco. Okay. I, no, Carmel's cool. But I mean, yeah. you know, there was a whole scene. I don't know what it's like now. Carmel, yeah. but a whole scene there. Um, yeah. So, yeah. And Idaho, I mean, yeah, there's plenty of cowboys roaming around yeah not, not exactly where, right where we live but <laughs> right but both of you i think it seems are more kind of southwest imagery um mm -hmm. than you know cowboys on horses and you know the mountain scenes so you do do those and we have one right now for francis that's in the show that's just opening yeah i mean southwest you know, Francis kind of really introduced me to Maynard Dixon yes. and a lot of other. I, I mean, right. he was very aware of Bloom and China and a lot of yeah. artists yeah. early okay. on, right. which we should have invested in some of that. They, they were expensive <laughs> then, too. You yeah. Know? Yeah. No, I know. You know? I know. Uh, um, yeah. So then I became much more aware of the Southwest. And the, what's interesting about the Southwest is the, the light and the shapes and. You know, in Idaho, there's a bunch of trees. <laughs> right. The mountains aren't, the shapes aren't as interesting. Right. And the colors, I'm sure, are way different. Yes. The yeah. south, and especially what you can do with, yeah. I mean, you know, the colors. Adobe and, and sun is an amazing thing. Yeah. And you can really push, they don't all have to be beigey. You know? Right. You can really push the color. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, you've been doing this now for, what, six, 50 plus years? Yeah, 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 which is kind yeah. of scary. Yeah. But Fifty yes. plus years. Yeah. Yes. Um, so, where do you see yourself going from here? I mean, you're in your prime, really, kind of as an artist. I think. Well, I started. I've become. I did a series of nests, and right. I kind of. I mean, I've always liked being outside. Right. And and where we live, we're right next to the river, and you can walk along and see all sorts of creatures and birds and mm -hmm. a lot of stuff that. It easily like we just have to walk across the street right and where a lot of people are very removed from that you know mm -hmm. that live in urban areas and anyway i've always connected with outside and not sitting in an office under right so maybe lights. yeah more yeah. of that nature uh, so yeah. yeah which is cool i like the idea of trying to bring that you know involve that in my in my art yeah I like and that also idea. like 
what I really like about just the natural world is there's just infinite, yeah. very interesting patterns yeah. that are never repetitive, yeah. and there's not there's no right angles, right. and um, that's what I just love observing. I mean, because I really like to watch people and just observe, right? Yeah. And so yeah, I'm trying to bring that into the nest paintings I'm working on currently. Yeah, I mean, you know, just. Textures, kind, te fractals, kind. Yeah. You know, light, I color, mean, ephemeral. We were in a hotel in Nevada on the way down here. And, I mean, Wells, Nevada is like, most people would just go, oh, God, I can't stand driving through here. It's all sage Russian. I mean, there are some cool mountains. There. Right. Yeah. But then I was looking at some photographs in the hotel where people were shooting, you know, just dry, cracked earth and with a little bit of snow on right. it, with the, that kind of pattern. And cool patterns in really dry canyon areas and yeah. the color. Yeah, Mix, mixing art, really. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah, it, I mean, it's all natural abstraction, in, you know, in a mm -hmm. way. Yeah. Have you ever thought about doing more, doing abstract art at all? I've thought about it. I mean, Francis is kind of intimidating to be around because he... He can just sort of wing it on there. I mean, which is what you have to do with abstract art. Right. And I'm more sort of tied to an underdrawing, although I'm getting away from that with these nest paintings I'm doing. Yeah. But yeah, I'm much... He, he He's scary. I mean, he doesn't really plan stuff. I mean, he does with the Southwest right. stuff, right? Um, which involves a lot more composition and picture making, and so does abstract art. Right. But he's willing to just kind of... Throw the art around. Yeah. The paint. Stick yeah. the paint on there, and I don't like this, and scrape it or yeah. pour gooey stuff on it, or you know, just <laughs> right. Yeah, Do, is it intimidating at all? Being you know, yes, yeah, I would think in a weird way it would be. I mean, he's a great painter. He his use color usage because that's a lot of people. Because I've taught art a yeah. lot. Yeah, right? you did for a long time. I right? did right. And people are just freaking, a lot of people, terrified of color. And then they take color theory, and that makes their brain seize up even more. Because uh -huh. they're like, oh, God, let's see. I got Color wheel. Uh, yeah, exactly. And, yeah. And it's it's intimidating because, you know, they teach you all this theory. And, oh, God, I got to think about it now. I got to, which often people are much better if they just start painting and their color usage evolves. Yeah. Yeah. And... His color now is just crazy insane good. And it's all intuitive. He doesn't plan anything. Yeah, to me, that's the biggest change I've seen in the last, whatever, 15, 18 years I've represented him is uh, his color, high key colors, and just his, you know, it's just bold, mind boggling. No, and the color imagery. relationships. Yeah, yeah, no, I get Some it. Some of it is very sophisticated. And yeah, you, can, no. you can't teach that. It's just no. in his weird brain and yeah. the way he <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Which, and well you just put it here and oh yeah we do this uh, one. No, here. and he just go you know, there's no color uh rough or you know, comp. Right. It's he just puts it on there. I mean, which is because he's very intuitive. You know, and that's what is kind of intimidating about him and but i find that i can kind of go there if i just let myself go mm, let the control of, go yeah yeah and i just kind of feel it more mm. you know what she's told me for years but i'm finally kind of getting closer to that right because you know you can always paint over it or scrape it off or... yeah it's i'm it's like doing jokes that are written jokes versus doing improv yeah exactly you know yes and so when you let go of those strict rules or joke structure, and then you go, I'm just going to feed off the colors. Mm -hmm. I'm going to feed off the structure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I get it. No, totally. Yeah. That's, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah because I, when I started doing watercolor, I was, you know, you got to stay in the lines. I mean, I was much more controlled. Right. And that's what, a, and watercolor shouldn't be used that way. But yeah. that's what a lot of people do with it. You know, they can try to control that. And it's it's a very fluid medium, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's what the sort of happy accidents, that's a term yeah. I heard a long time ago in art M school, but, but it's, it's true. true. Yeah, it's true. it is very true. It's true. Yeah. And just what the water can do, and depending on the pigment you're using, some of it can leave more of a um, grainy effect kind mm -hmm. of. And, you know, color areas of washes washing into other areas that are wet or throwing more paint into a wash that's already wet with color mm -hmm. 
I mean, you can do, there's a lot of cool stuff that people that get too controlled with it, you know, then they might as well use oil or acrylic. Right. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. And I think as you get older, you're probably, or you don't care about as much what people say no. in the whole world, right? No. Just not that, no. but everything, right? No. And that allows you more of a freedom. You can go, eh, I don't know. No, care. exactly. Because there's such a range of opinions. <laughs> And yeah. interpretations right. of art and and, yeah. and if you don't and, do that you may not ever find that thing that was the greatest thing that you did exactly you know that it was yes. really well you had to work through that whole process right to get to where it is and yeah I, and I, you're evolving and yeah. hopefully same with wayne yeah. tebow right? yeah i mean you're trying to went change from pies to you know landscapes no and then his his crazy building paintings the freeways and stuff that were, oh no they were very cool God, I just love those. I know. Yeah, I mean, he did beach things too early on, and clowns and different stuff too early did he on. Do clowns? He did early on. He did all these interesting things, but they wouldn't be recognized. Those are pre-sixties kind of stuff. I don't yeah, think no, I remember seeing a few was because I I think he already had his place on uh, in San Francisco on Portero Hill mm-hmm. maybe because I can I could almost tell looking at some of them, um, but they were too literal. You know, here's the street scene. Right. Yeah, and then he evolved and he bent, pushed it yeah, yeah, he, and abstracted yeah. it. And yeah. Yeah. And that had to come with time. And he did watercolor too. Yeah. He would lot. do it in class sometimes. Yeah, he's really good at good watercolors. Yeah. I've seen quite a few of them. And no, now they, they've gotten extremely expensive too. Oh, I'm sure they oh, just ridiculous. No, his prints. I know. Like dark cake, some of those. I'm like, idiot, why don't we buy one? Well, Which, again... <laughs> You know, <laughs> especially you, now that he's when you have no money and you may and you probably started having kids and all yeah. that stuff. Yeah. No, and the other thing about being freelance is that you never feel totally secure. Like, oh, yeah. I should get that condo in Hawaii, but what? You know, yeah. what if we're, the, I'm making a bunch of money now? What but, if the marketplace doesn't want yeah, me and goes exactly, digital? Exactly. Which is it happened. No, that was. Was that scary when you guys said... It kind of was. We know. kept dissing it, thinking, okay, it's just going to be another look, another style, right? Right. But it's just ruined illustration. Yeah. Because it's cheap. I mean, that's how clients view it. And they can get a result almost instantly with right. somebody just doing a digital comp, basically. Right. Whereas, you know, if somebody's doing color comp, it takes X amount of time, or you're just... I mean, often we just do pencil sketches, mm-hmm. right? And art directors that knew what they were doing could then translate that to the client. Okay, look at the portfolio, look at the images. Right, this is what it's going to look like. Yeah, exactly. But a lot of clients can't make that leap. No, I would think most couldn't, actually. No, and so the digital stuff is much more comforting yeah, to clients. Yeah, it, well, it's complete, for one thing. Yeah, exactly. And, and can be changed instantaneously. Yes. Yeah, yeah, because we used to make a ton of money off of changes. Yeah, because they'd be in a hurry. They had a tight deadline, and they, right. they, and the agents would just jack it out the wazoo. With the you know the price for a change. Right. Yeah. And so that had to be scary. At, at one point, you with the digital stuff, you had to realize, okay, this is not going to be here. No, and that pushed us also Even more hurt. more into yeah. gallery stuff. Yeah. Because, yeah. And so, do you think? That, I mean, it really changed the way everything for you guys too. I mean, as mm-hmm. far as it's a better deal <laughs> when you, or isn't it? I don't know. I would assume well, being a fine artist. Sometimes, okay, doing an illustration job, yeah. it's much more comforting because you got a purchase order right there. I see. You know, and and in some ways, it's almost easier for a client to tell you, okay, this is kind of what I need. Sometimes mm-hmm. it's very specific and, you I know, and then you're solving their problem. Right. And so there's there's more of a structure Right. To what you're doing versus gallery stuff. Yeah, give me 15, 20 paintings. What kind? What am I going to do? Ones. <laughs> yeah. And then you're sitting there and you're painting, you know, with the purchase order, you know you're going to get paid. Right? right. But with gallery work, yeah. oh, yeah, I'm doing 10 paintings and, hmm. Right. And I, frames. Yes. And are these going to sell? And, you right. know, and the markets fluctuate, you know, in different places. I mean, because Francis shows all around the country and yeah. one's kind of up and the other one, you know. Yeah, but he consistently, I mean, I know for us, we've consistently sold his yes. work and your work as well. Yes. But we've consistently, it's just like. Yeah, the Southwest stuff yeah. has been very I mean, consistent. It's, I don't have anybody that, I mean, he, both of you are in your own lane, which is nice, you know. Yeah, we have to be. Well, and I you mean, are. I mean, there are people <laughs> that, you know, that artists that 
do things similar, but, you know, don't have the same competence level, in my opinion. Um, no, and sometimes, I mean, when I do my Southwest painting, that's not like what I'm doing with the nest. It's much more sort of controlled. Some of that looks it kind of, you know, somebody that's not very familiar with Francis's work could look at it and go, oh, that's a Francis Livingston. I mean, not like I'm trying to copy, no. you know, but it, but there's influence. Yeah, influence, but... But you can't help that. Yeah, you can't help that. And again, no. I I mean, I, again, for me, I can tell, I mean, I look at your work and his oh, work yeah, is completely right. different. Yes. You know, from just all, every component of it, actually. Yeah. Other than maybe the subject might be similar, but... Right. And not even because we're looking, and at not it. even then, <laughs> really, honestly. Yeah, no, I. Yeah, not yeah, even then. because you know it well, right? But yeah, I yeah. mean, I remember seeing an ad in the New York Times of a building, you know, looking at a window, and and I think it was, I don't know if it's black and white or not, but I remember going, "That's Francis Livingston's ad. He did that. I can tell. That's his building." Like yeah, it was for Park West or Park One or something. It was in oh, the Sunday edition, yeah. Was it? Yeah, it was a I nice big remember. ad. I mean, was, he's I, done. I called this. him and said, did you just do an ad yeah. for the... And he goes, yeah. yeah, that's fine. I go, yeah, I could tell it was your... I could see it in his brush strokes. Yeah, I right. Just, I just I was like, that's Livingston's brush strokes. Yeah, because he's really... He's not predictable. The way yeah. he handles the paint, it's kind of... There's a very specific fingerprint. Yeah, you know? yeah. So having done this now for 50 years... Do you, what would you say to young artists that might go, okay, I want to do what Francis or what you're doing? I'd say you go know? be a doctor or well, a Especially from your point of view because you, you're from a – Or you know, tech. You know, <laughs> a, you know you, you've done illustration. You know, you've had to deal with whatever you had to deal with. It sounds like not too much, but still being a Western artist and being a woman, there's always those Yeah, issues. there's that. Yeah, yes. so what would you say is maybe more specifically to – Somebody who wants to go into the Western art and maybe is a female artist. You want to be honest? Yeah. Marry a Dr. Lawyer <laughs> <laughs> so that you have someone that's that's guaranteed making it. See, I hear it your, doesn't I, have I to hear be your just mother that. in this. I hear your mother in this. Yeah, I don't even know. I mean, yeah. He to dies a at degree. 15. But it's it, really two artists. It's difficult. Yeah, what you're it's, saying is it's nice to have somebody. Or a that, trust fund is that, good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's nice to have somebody, though, that can. Has steady money coming in yeah. so, so you can rely on that. And then, you yeah. know, you have to. I mean, still, you're constrained by what sells and what doesn't. And, right. You know. Yeah. So marry a doctor. That's your advice. <laughs> Should we edit a lawyer, this part? A tech person. <laughs> <laughs> tech. Yeah, that makes yeah. Oh. Yes. Yeah. yeah, as your one of your children did. Yeah, my well, my daughter-in-law and my my younger son. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They're in tech. No, my daughter-in-law works for evil Facebook. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. But yes, I mean, there is a check that comes in. Yeah, so I get uh -huh. it. So there's, I think maybe that's the takeaway that art is insecure financially. It can you be. You always just have this feeling in the back of your yeah. mind, you know, that, that you have to recognize that and be okay with it yes to be able yes. to do yes it. yeah yeah and if you're a woman and you're doing i just say go for it i mean in terms of you know what you want to paint yeah you know if you're into that subject matter yeah try it do it for a while and you know let it kind of evolve and see what happens right well you know it's interesting even as a, a you know you're an artist but as a gallerist at least for me you know i feel this pressure like, I understand you don't eat if I don't sell. Right. Right. And there's so there's pressure on my end as well when I go, you know, I've got to, you know, <laughs> you know, do those kind of things. And not just me, but the whole gallery is like, OK, we've got to do well for our artists because we understand our responsibility. You know, we have yeah. a big responsibility. If we don't sell the art, then. Yeah. yeah. Know. I mean, you have to be the kind of personality that can sort of live with that kind of risk or you know whatever well i think yeah. being a physician helps right because you give advice on things sometimes and things may not work out as well and you have to deal with whatever you know you're given the best advice and mm -hmm. you know right or things don't work out as you would hope maybe for the patient so you have to be able to i think take that burden mm -hmm. or you're a gallerist who just doesn't care 
And then well, like, there are those. There are those out <laughs> yes. there. It's like, well, they didn't, didn't get enough things or whatever. Yeah. But yeah, so I get it on both ends. I mm-hmm. get it on your end. Like, you know, we would like to pay our house payment this month. Yeah, exactly. You know, mm-hmm. and not have to go sell our and land. And houses cost a lot more than these do. Yeah. It's just. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. Anything else before we go out and look at uh, Francis's show? Have you got to see it yet? Did yeah, you look I, at it? I've it's seen really it. beautiful. I'm, I mean, I haven't seen it on the wall, but yes. Oh, I, yeah. Oh, well, it's a big difference. I've seen it in a messy studio. <laughs> yeah, you know, but I mean, right, that's never the same, right? I mean. No, it's not. It's it's not. It's, you know, and all the ones you saw didn't have frames on them, right? Exactly. They're stacked up and yeah. just, you know. Wrapped in cardboard, whatever. I yes. find it always interesting, <laughs> you know, when I, especially if I'm getting a big body of work for a show for an artist, mm-hmm. I recognize at that moment, okay, this is hundreds of hours of work it is you know it is and this is the only time they're going to be together it, like this it's not like taking a photo you know where it's a, just a few seconds in right. time or you know you're doing a lot of observation but you're snapping it right paintings evolve you know over you're working on them you set them aside yeah. you're working some more uh so yeah and for a show there you can know, be. Yeah, you, you got the time pressure. Yeah, and you have the subject go, okay, what should I do here? What should I do there? No, exactly. Yeah, I mean, there's yeah. that thing where with illustration, you know what it is and you do it. Pretty much, although you yeah. can screw up illustrations. But with water, but at least you can just do another one. You can one. get an add-on or something and they charge more, so that's okay. Yeah. There are no add-ons if you got to scrape one of your paintings for a show. No, or you, yeah, yes. And there I get is the, always that. And I get the feeling Francis can scrape pretty quickly and easily. Oh, he can. Plus, he's just, you know, you reach a point where he's pretty com- confident about what yeah. he's doing. Right? Yeah, well, you know, he's been doing this 50 years, yeah, too. Yeah, exactly. And he exactly. also, like you, has taught uh, in San Francisco. What was the name of the the academy you guys taught at? Academy of Art yeah, University. Yeah, Academy of Art University. So you both have taught for a very long time. and Yeah. You know, that gives you confidence, I mean, too, he's I taught I mean, for the kind of the the latter part of the time he was teaching for them he had a lot of chinese students and asian students which wasn't so prevalent but they were recruiting in asia Hmm. so yeah so there was a whole kind of cultural thing and you know they're way into art but and the idea of creating illustration but their culture is much more limited in certain ways and it depends on what part of asia they're from right well and there's you know billion four or whatever people so there's a lot of creative people in that world there are they yes i mean it's, it's just sheer it's numbers the culture though there's not you know they're not as expansive with music i mean depending on where they're from like yeah. china is very restrictive well, we, yeah well china's you know you've got to be careful like, you yeah know, exactly get edited, exactly you know or, yeah so there's worse yeah 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 all right on that happy note <laughs> Thank you for coming in and spending some time with me. Yeah, it's been, uh, I, I don't know why we haven't had you on here sooner, but it just happens. I've represented you for a very long time. We you always, have. We have right. some great work, and you can find it, Sue Rother, and her husband is Francis Livingston. I've already done his podcast, so you can go and listen to it if you want to hear about Francis. So thank you. Thanks, Mark. All right. Let's go have fun. Sun. Okay. Right? Sun. There's sun. There is sun. Yeah. Yes. I know. And it's going to be this way all week. I know. So Sabino mm-hmm. just. Yeah, we were bring... up there. Already? Yes. Nice. <laughs> but not long enough. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> we can go right back up there now. I know.